Thank you. That uh, video really is what it's like to work at Summit. It's a fun place to work. But first, um, I'd like to read a letter that Mark received on October 3rd, 1983. The letter was from the Executive Secretary of the Brewers Association of America. And for those of you who do not know, the Brewers Association of America is an industry trade association. The letter reads as follow as follows. Uh, Mr. Mark Stoutrud, thank you for your letter, and I note that you're working on a feasibility study of establishing a brewery in the Twin Cities area. This is my favorite part. Please note that I am not encouraging you to do so because it is a long and hard road that you are planning to go down. With all the best wishes, William O'Shea, Executive Secretary of the Brewers Association of America. So not, not only did Mark receive this letter, but unlike Dale, Mark's parents um, tried to discourage Mark from his initial uh, studies. Mark's degree is in social work from the University of North Dakota. Mark's father told me once that he th thought Mark was crazy to get a degree in social work originally, that those who get degrees in psychology, sociology, social work, are really the ones that need the help more than those <laughs> who they give the help to. So then when Mark actually got a position utilizing his social work degree, and then he decided to leave that social work job to start a brewery, Odin, Mark's father, thought that idea was outlandish. But thankfully to all the craft brewing enthusiasts, Mark ignored the letter received from the Brewers Association of America and his parents' advice, he remained committed to starting a brewery. As I mentioned, Mark didn't have a background in business, engineering, or science, nor did he have experience in much of a corporate world. I think because Mark hasn't been indoctrinated with corporate rules, he did things differently. He made drinking craft beer in Minnesota cool before what it is today, the thriving craft brewing scene that we have. Twin Cities consumers and Summit Brewing uh, Company employees have Mark to, thanks, to thank for that. Mark's paramount goals have always been, uh, and they are today, just as was stated in the video, to invest in quality, never take shortcuts, invest in modern brewing and packaging technology, and very importantly, as the founder of our brewery, to invest in employees and give back to the community in which the brewery serves. I could note the corporate giving awards that Summit has received or the vast number of awards, awards that Summit beers have earned accolades for, but this is the last inductee tonight. So I will not bore you with that because the list is far too long. There are some companies in which uh, the company serves as the vehicle to support the lifestyle of the founder or the CEO. I can absolutely tell you that Summit Brewing Company is not that company for Mark Stutrud. He doesn't have a lake home. He doesn't have a, a fleet of sports cars. He doesn't golf, so he doesn't belong to a country club. We often joke, those of us, the uh, longer tenured employees at the brewery, that we sometimes wish Mark would find a hobby. <laughs> only to allow himself uh, some time away from the brewery to relax. If there's one addiction that he has, uh, the inside joke that we say is that Mark has a stainless steel fetish, and you could see that in the video. He loves uh, having, investing in top-notch equipment and fostering employees. That's what Mark is passionate about. Mark greets each and every employee the same way, very modestly, humbly. He thanks them for the work that they do at Summit. He appreciates the work that a part-time taproom brewery ambassador does by keeping glasses properly sanitized, and Mark is really picky about proper sanitation of glasses, just so you know. Uh, he appreciates that as much as he does the formulation that a brewer might have uh, to create a new unchained beer style. He'll speak to the neighborhood bar owner the same way that he'll speak to the CEO of a public company of a national chain of restaurants. He's a leader that respects all, doesn't seek out accolades, and shares the brewery's success with others. He truly embodies how tone at the top affects the culture of the company. 
I asked everyone who's attending tonight to give me a few adjectives that describe Mark. I think this really is the testament to the type of person that he is. Innovator, visionary, tenacious, incredible, revolutionary, honest, determined, purposeful, pioneering, passionate, charismatic, sincere, genuine, calm, generous, earnest, loyal, creative, committing, discerning, authentic, and humble. But Brian Turner of Go 96.3 had a great story. He said to me, uh, th these are his thoughts about Mark. Minnesota may be known as the land of 10,000 lakes or the state of hockey or any other, uh, any other number of phrases, but a person like Mark Stutrud helps to ensure that the North Star State will always be remembered for quality brews also. Very well said, E.T. And Mayor Chris Coleman, who is also featured in this video, the proud uh, mayor of St. Paul, while he's not here to my, tonight, he has told me and has spoke at events uh, and has named Mark the godfather of the craft brewing scene in Minnesota, and I couldn't agree more. It is my pleasure to introduce Mark Stutrud. <laughs> Kelly, thank you very much. I hope all of you enjoyed that leather jacket in the video. <laughs> so there had been a little bit more auditing or editing going on there, but this is really a huge and an unexpected honor. And I want to thank Dale and the staff from Twin City Business Monthly for this. It's also an honor that I share with the entire organization, including our patient shareholders. And, you know, jumping into some of these accidental things that Jim talked about. One of the things I don't talk about too frequently is that uh, when I was trying to get out of North Dakota after working at a state hospital for four years and had been a supervisor and a trainer, I decided to finish my MSW. And there are only two schools in the US that had a psychotherapy path under social work. Otherwise, it was working in infrastructure and bureaucracy. One was in Seattle and one was in Madison. And I thought, well. Why the heck would I want to go to Seattle? So I only applied to one school. This was back in 79. I received the application back. They invited me to interview for one of 60 seats. Everything went really well. The woman that interviewed me and spent the entire day with me said, when you come back to school, I'll be your advisor. Well. As it happened, I received a rejection letter by mistake. So when I think about stuff like this, that, you know, I probably would have gone into private practice and be retired by now. <laughs> but I sure as hell would not have had as much fun and gone through hard work. And then moving here in 1980 and then taking a job at St. Mary's Hospital where I was a supervisor of the Adolescent Chemical Dependency Program in their evaluation unit. You know, I made a living out of torturing psychiatrists. I was interrupting their income because they wanted to have these kids that were flown from New York to stay in Minneapolis. And I was a strong advocate of family therapy in getting back into the community and maybe getting some scrapes on the cheek and a broken nose or two, you know, before they end up in prison. 
Well, as it happens during consolidation that happened in the health industry back then in uh, the mid 80s, my job merged with the head nurse position, which made total sense. But the hiring panel was my former boss, who loved me, and the other two psychiatrists that I fought with on a daily basis. <laughs> they offered me a position to stay and be with the family therapy team, but having done two years of part-time research in feasibility, feasibility study and apprenticeship at a couple of small breweries in the U.S., I thought, maybe we should just go ahead and take the risk. This is a sign. This is the beauty of this award. And it's the beauty of our life experience as an entrepreneur is that we experience unexpected things through hard work and planning. It's a damn good thing we don't know what's going, what's around that corner. We should be prepared for it, but keep going. I've been described as a modest person, and that's true to my father. He always told me action speaks louder than words. So I always thought, I'll get my stuff done and then just go to the next task. My mother, who, uh, Hazel, I have a strong sense of humility from her. She had a very low tolerance for BS. She was a very blunt Swede. She always told me to uh, stay close to my roots. Don't get a big head. If you achieve something, share it. So those have been some basic tenets of Summit Brewing Company. And I'm really blessed to have such a strong organization of very, very competent individuals to share daily life and daily work with. I can't imagine a better time. So this award goes to those folks as well. So thank you very much. Thank you.